Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Um, what I'm doing here is a lot of people ask me about water changes. That uh, a lot of people, they use the anoxic filter and they wind up not doing water changes for quite a while. In fact, uh, some of these saltwater people have made claims that they haven't changed their water in over four months. And uh, that, because they use it like a BCB basket and stuff like that, and they found out that they didn't have to do all the water changes that they used to. That's the same way with fresh water. Uh, you don't have to do all the water changes that you used to. And people have asked me, well, how often do I change my water? Well, I add and change water once a week, only, and as I explain to people, only because in this particular tank, there's a lot of snails, which need calcium for their shells, and I have a lot of shrimp. Okay, I have my abano shrimp, I have my cherry shrimp, they have bread, and therefore uh, I have a lot of shrimp in here. They require calcium for their outer shells. So once they molt and need a new shell, they need that calcium. And here in Florida, like up north in Chicago, we have hard water, very hard water, and it will leave a white ring on the top of your aquarium here, and you know what for your calcium builds up, and everything seems to get a calcium buildup. The same as up north. It's just it's great for like uh, mabuna tanks that require hard water, high calcium water. So here in Florida, we have very hard water. It's not soft, and therefore I do a water change. I don't siphon out the gravel, but basically, as you can see, I just go to a certain limit. When it reaches that limit, I refill it. That's it. Water change done. It takes a matter of minutes. I use the automatic siphon, which I did a video for you uh, to uh, show you this is how I do it. Right now, it is siphoning the tank without any water pressure, so it is actually created a siphon. If I want it to go faster, I could turn on the cold water. If I want it to go even siphon faster yet, you can turn on the hot and cold water. It, uh, it's really up to each hobbyist that if you want to siphon your tanks, you can start one of these siphons, these automatic siphons, and then you can turn it off. Now, my sink, my bathroom sink, is lower, of course, it comes about here, Okay, but because the siphon has already started going through the hose, it is still siphoning water even when you turn the water off at the sink faucet. It's still siphoning. So, but it's siphoning slowly. Uh, that means you don't have to really use water to siphon your tank. And this gives you the opportunity, if you had multiple tanks, to multitask. Now you can do something else. And of course, when the water reaches the level of my intake here, it's just going to catch air, and air is going to go, and it's going to stop siphoning. Then I know, okay, enough water has been taken out. Now I can put new water in, and uh, that's all I do. Uh, the substrate has not been clean in over a year. So I wanted to make that very clear to this plenum. For one thing, uh, there's just too many plants now in this aquarium. The, the, it's just wall-to-wall -wall plants now. And I'm, I'm letting it go. I'm trying to see because um, who knows that maybe after two years, the plant growth is just going to be so bad. I'll be forced to do something with the aquarium of uh, having to thin out plants and to spend hours thinning out and pulling plants out and everything else out of the aquarium because it's going to be so overgrown. I know a lot of hobbyists out there wish they could say the same thing that, oh, I had to wind up getting rid of plants because they get overgrown. But when it comes to like the goldfish aquarium, for example, uh, look at the picture. And the picture here shows you uh, a one gallon container and it's full of the Harnworth. Now, I have to clean the Harnworth out about every, I'm going to say three weeks. And I get over a gallon of Hornworth I got to throw away from the goldfish aquarium. It's growing that profusely. 
because of the lighting system. Now there's no CO2 on the goldfish aquarium, but as you can see, a whole gallon bucket every three weeks I have to clean up. I have to clean the whole thing. Otherwise, the goldfish uh, can't swim. It winds up being so profuse that they can't swim on the sides of the aquarium. So I constantly have to do maintenance on that fast growing plant to pull out about a gallon or more and just toss it in the trash can. Um, I can't do nothing else with it. But that's the only downside. I think I've told people that. That's the only downside. Once your plants get growing and you're using a BCB basket or plant them, it seems like uh, they just keep going. And, it's, and the thing about it, let, let, me, let me tell you this, like with the Harnworth, for example, I don't put any fertilizer in that aquarium, just like I don't th this aquarium. The only thing that's added to this aquarium is iron. That's all. And that's, that's uh, uh, from Seachem. And I have that in the in the automatic top off sump. I put the iron in there once a week, let the sump run for the whole week, and then I add a few little bit more iron, refill up the sump. That's all that's added to this aquarium. And over uh, almost fourteen, yeah, fourteen months now since the aquarium's been up. The main thing I've ever added to this aquarium is just iron. I haven't had to add any other kind of fertilizers or anything else. Um, none of your multiple fertilizers with nitrogen, phosphates. No. Let the plants use the nitrogen that's in the aquarium and the phosphates that's in the aquarium. You're constantly feeding your fish, so you're constantly making phosphates and nitrates for the plants. There's no reason these, those elements that are in trace elements need to be put in macro elements. You don't have to change it to macro. They're in trace. It's the same way with the goldfish tank. I do not feed it. In fact, I, uh, I don't even put any iron in it. And the only reason I haven't put any iron in that aquarium is because once I, one, I'm not using CO2 like I'm doing with this aquarium. Therefore, the photosynthesis of the plant is going to be a little different than in this aquarium where I'm injecting CO2. The next thing of it is, is in that aquarium, I don't need it. The hornworts seem to be having more than enough nourishment. And you can tell by the red tips when the hornworth grows new growth and it's getting enough light. Now on the goldfish aquarium, of course, I'm using that uh, radon light that puts 195 watts of LED into it. And it's about eight, nine inches above the water surface. And that seems to be doing the trick of enough light in the aquarium for the plants to grow. In fact, it's a little too much light for the uh, wisteria, because you can tell the wisteria, when you give a wisteria less light, it gets big. And you give it more light, and it kind of shrinks up, because it's it's getting more than enough light that it doesn't have to expand its leaves. So therefore, it will shrink up a little bit. This will depend on your lighting. When I used the fluval light, it opened up. It was nice and big. Now I'm using this 195 watt LED uh, radon light. You can tell the wisteria has shrunk up. It doesn't mean it's dying or anything. It just means it's receiving enough light that it doesn't have to expand. This is the difference between plants that hobbies have to learn. There are, there are a couple of things I want to bring up. Hobbies start new tanks. And the first thing they do is, my plants don't look good. Your plants may not look good because they, what were they? Were they emergent or submergent plants when they were grown by the greenhouse? You don't know. If they were emergent plants, then they're going to go through shock. And they're not going to look good for quite a while because they're going to have to go through shock. All those leaves are going to have to die off. And brand new leaves and everything else are going to have to reproduce for the submergent. So a lot of people have asked me, I bought new plants, they're not looking good. I, I think I need more fertilizer. Well, if they're new plants, they may be looking that way only because they're new and they maybe were emergent instead of submergent plants that were grown in the greenhouse. And therefore, they're going to go into a shock. Even submergent plants are going to go in the shock because you're transferring a plant from one container to another. Uh, for example, uh, all plants go into shock, whether terrestrial or not. 
But there is an exception to these rules. Like, for example, mums that we buy in fall, they don't go into a shock when you take them out of their container and put them in your garden. For some reason, mums do not go into a shock and they don't get hindered. They seem to go through that transition of the pot to soil without going into a shock. Mums do. But other plants do. It doesn't matter whether you buy a hosta or uh, whatever you buy, a bee balm or if you're buying a foxglove. These are all going to go into a shock period. You pull them out of that container. They were comfortable. A lot of greenhouses and stuff grow roots in those containers. So a lot of plants don't have a lot of roots. They put them in those containers. They want them to grow a root system before they sell them to you. So they have a chance to make it. They go into a shock. It's no different than when you're buying a plant for your aquatic garden. The plant's growing into a pot. When you move it out of that pot and you move all the stuff from around it, it goes into a shock. And it's got to recover from that shock. How long will it take to recover? Who knows? The next thing they always say is, well, I'm adding fertilizer because they think their plants need fertilizer right off the bat. If you have a new tank, don't add fertilizers. Your tank doesn't really need any fertilizer for quite a few months, even if you're using CO2, because the plants have went into shock. Your tank has enough nutrients in it. That's why when you usually have new tanks, and if you watch some of these guys' videos, you they'll say, well, my tank got brown algae, and then my tank got hair algae, or my tank got beard algae. These are stages of a brand new tank. Uh, if you remember my video on the goldfish tank, remember I said I got some beard algae when it was brand new. Remember that? And I went and got some trapdoor snails and they seemed to eat the beard algae. This is what new tanks do because they have a nutrient flux in the aquarium and you are going to wind up with problems when you first set up your aquarium. This is normal. This is why I always say be patient. You'll be rewarded in the end. Wait for those nutrients to get used up. What happens, and I've seen this happen a lot, they start squirting in fertilizers, thinking, I need fertilizer, and you're just compounding the problem because you're being impatient. You know, it, 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 it's, it's like when you plant a, tr a tree or something like that, they say the first year you plant it, the tree doesn't do much. You plant a brand new tree and you don't get much, but it's growing its root system. The second year, it's going to grow a little bit of its root system and a little bit of its foliage. But it's the third year of that tree where it's going to start growing its foliage because it now has developed the root system. The same thing has to happen with your aquatic plant. You have to develop a root system first. So that plant has been planted in your substrate. It has to develop that root system before it's going to do much of anything else before it starts doing its greenery for you. So once the root system gets developed, where it can take nutrients in through the root system, if it is a plant that needs to be rooted, it's going to take time to do that. They don't grow in one or two weeks a full vascular system to start taking up stuff. They will let you know, and I've showed pictures in my video, of the root system developing. And then after it develops its root system, it has to develop its hair root system. Now the hair root, the little follicles are the ones that are going to be taking in nutrients. That's how well your plants will have to start working to start taking nutrients out of the water. If it doesn't, and if you look at a lot of plants, they don't have a hair root system really developed on them because they didn't have to use it because they were being fertilized and all from the greenhouse or from the grower. So therefore, they didn't need to develop a hair root system. In our aquariums, they need to develop a hair root system. So just try to remember that. Patience with your plants. Wait until they develop their root system. Don't keep putting fertilizer in at least for three months, four months into it. You're going to have a lot of changes happening with a brand new aquarium. A lot of changes. You're going to get different algae. Uh, as you remember some of my videos, I had spot algae. Remember? 
because a lot of people say, oh, because your phosphates are so low that you're getting that spot algae. Now I don't have spot algae. You see, the, the tank has cycled. The tank has now done its thing. And that takes months. Like a pond, for example, could take several seasons to finally cycle, where an aquarium will take several months, six, seven, eight months, to finally break all its cycles and nutrient load, where all of a sudden it's, it's just like, oh, wow, I have no algae. I, I, the hair algae went away and the beard algae magically disappeared because it's went through all of its cycles and those algae has gone. The spot algae that I used to get, it's gone. So anyhow, I got to finish up this aquarium. I'm siphoning out too much water because I've been talking. Anyhow, as, as I've been talking, this has been siphoning out and I don't have any water running. So that's what I usually do. So I don't waste a lot of water. But uh, like I showed in my test, I use the hot and cold to get everything started. And then I can turn the water off and let it do its thing. And now I'm going to fill the tank off. So that's it for this video. I got to finish up adding water to this aquarium. Oh, I will add some dechlor to the aquarium because I do have shrimp and stuff like that. And they're a little sensitive to chlorinated water. So I will add some dechlor to the water. I did a video on that. Uh, sodium thiphosphate for you, how to make it, how to make it up. Um, so you can use that, especially if you're someone that does a lot of water change. But uh, try uh, try to watch that video for your dechlorination uh, so you can dechlor your water. But anyhow, uh, this tank now I have to fill it up. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a little bit of information. I want to show you this is all I do. Refill it and now I'll go to the other goldfish tanks and I'll do the same. Exchange water because I do have snails. And usually if you're going to have snails, you're going to have to keep your calcium up higher because they're shells. And what will happen if you don't keep that calcium up, their shells will get thin, start breaking, uh, or the snail is going to wind up dying, or the shrimp. If they don't have enough calcium for that outer skeleton, they're not going to make it and do very well. So you got to make sure you have enough calcium in your water for that. Some people will use oyster shells to break down and put calcium back into the uh, system. Anyhow, this is Dr. Novak. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. And this is basically all I do when I do a water shake. Now I fill it up and I'm done. I'll go up to the next tank. Until next time, uh, happy fish keeping.